Although the rain held off on day two of the 2011 Star Class Yacht Racing Championship, weather still proved troublesome for the 40-plus sailors. Officials had to suspend the first race due to dramatic wind shifts causing problems to conduct a fair race. Sharon Hadsell, principal race officer, talks about the unfavorable conditions which caused officials to sound the three-horn signal calling for the first race's suspension. First race uh, we abandoned due to a 90 degree wind shift and it really was not a fair competition at that point. Uh, and that's, that's simply the reason we did it. However, in hindsight, it was a, a good time to do it because the wind promptly died. And although Tomas Ornos, who led the fleet during the first suspended race, was disappointed about the call, he respected the official's decision. And the downwind was another struggle. I mean, the wind was dying and uh, continuing to shift right. And, you know, just keeping your air clear and going fast. Uh, we were able to round the mark in second, actually, at the lure mark. The Canadian boat passed us. And then, uh, but we, were, we tacked first for him. And we, uh, we kind of got bow out on him. And we're leading at that point. And then they, called, they blew the three horns. And we were pretty bummed, but I understood why it happened. The caliber of sportsmanship displayed by Ornos was also shared by his teammate, Kip Gardner. Uh, obviously, Tomas explained, uh, you know, the shift at the uh, top of the beat, but uh, I was a little disappointed, but like he said, it was shifting at the uh, start of the second beat that uh, it wasn't fair, and it probably would have been a parade to the, uh, to the next mark, so, you know, I had to swallow it and, you know, get back in the boat and do it again. During the two-hour suspension, sailors had a chance to reconnect with their Star Class colleagues. Jack Rickard, a Star Class racer since 1956, shares how sailors from all over the world are one big family. When I was in the service, I was stationed in St. Louis, and then uh, <coughs> I would come up here and race star boats. And as a project of the fleet, every week, weekend, I'd stay with another uh, member of the the club or of the uh, uh, star class so that I didn't have to buy a hotel room, which I was in poverty at the time. <laughs> Couldn't afford it. After the suspension, sailors were eager to get back on the water, but were disappointed when called back once again. Winds were not cooperative and shifted 180 degrees before dying off completely. But volunteers were on hand throughout the course to lend assistance and bring competitors back to land. Just as participants were being towed in, though, Mother Nature once again deceived officials by offering a gusty southerly wind. Hadsel again recounts how difficult it was to make the decision to bring in the competitors for the second time. We went back out on the water, waited for wind to fill in, which it did. Uh, we got a southerly that finally filled in about uh, 2 o'clock, between 2 and 3. Uh, we got a race off, uh, which looked really good until about halfway through the race <laughs> when the wind died. Completely, <laughs> completely <laughs> glass, a mill pond. So the poor sailors sat in the hot weather. Um, we hoped it would fill back in. It did not. When we got the first flicker of air, they were over um, an hour and 40 minutes into the race and had been sitting in the broiling sun for a long time. We did get a little flicker, not enough to really move the starboats, but it was 180 degree shift which again makes it a really unfair competition. And at that point, we were also concerned about the sailors being in the heat any longer. We did abandon uh, at that point. Despite all the dramatic weather changes, day two provided no change to the race leaderboard. Hopefully, day three will offer the opportunity for sailors to clinch points and switch up the standings.